Nu kommer Linda Blä. Nu kommer Linda. Ja, jag såg henne där. Jag kommer hit. Då såg du Linda. Där bakom scenen. Nu ska hon komma hit. Hallå allihopa. Kan vi få en stor applåd och välkomna Linda Blair ut till scenen i Stockholm. Does everybody speak English? Yeah. Because yeah. I only speak English. I'm going to just talk to you and tell you little stories. I'm not going to do any questions. Because I'm really tired. But I think I know everything you want to ask me. Exorcist, exorcist, exorcist. Am I right? Yes. Okay, here we go. Ready? So when I was a little girl, I was born in a place called St. Louis, Missouri, in the middle of America. My family moved to a place called Connecticut, next to New York City. And there was a magazine talking about kids modeling and doing commercials. And my mother thought, oh, this could be something that, whose phone is that? <laughs> this could be something that my kids could do save their money, go to school. So I got involved with modeling in old magazines that you now see, the old catalog houses and commercials and lots of commercials. And what happens in New York is that if you do the work as a child, you cause no trouble and you don't talk back to them, you just do what is said, you act respectful, you will get job after job after job. So, I worked in over 75 commercials. And by the time I was 12, 13 years old, I had saved enough money and I said to my mother, I wish to stop modeling and doing commercials and I want to apply myself to become a veterinarian. Do you know what a veterinarian is? I wanted to be a doctor to the animals. So, she said, okay. And at the same time, there was a very big novel, a book, around the world, everybody was talking about, called The Exorcist. But what would I know? I'm 13 years old, I don't know. So, we then talk to the agency and explain that we're going to stop and the agency says we have one more interview for you to go on okay so I go in and I try out for this film now I get called back to talk to the director and then I get called back to talk to the director with my mother and it goes on and on and then we do makeup tests and then we do many things and finally we end up signing a contract. And now we do more makeup. And it goes on and on and on. And finally, we start filming. We start filming in Washington, D.C. with all the monuments and all of that. And it was terrific. And then we went to New York City and that's where a lot of the sets were done where you hear about all the cold sets. Now, you look at a movie like Titanic and you know how they have the breath? Well, in The Exorcist, we didn't have anything like that. So, they had to make the set very, very cold so that people could see the breath. So, it was very, very cold conditions to work under. 
With that, we went through many different things. The movie eventually was finished, and then it came out as a little Christmas movie. This time of year, way back then, in order to make the Academy Award nomination period. So we all know the movie came out, the movie was across the world, it was very, very controversial because it was about a subject matter that only the Catholic Church knew about. I was not raised Catholic, I was raised Protestant. We did not talk about the devil, we talked about being good to others. My mother raised me to be charitable and to volunteer. So for any of you that know about my foundation, the Linda Blair World Heart Foundation, that's very much how I was raised. So I've always been a volunteer, but one day I said, you know what? I've had enough of everybody giving their hard-earned money. I care about animals. I care about children. I care about people. Yet why are there so many problems? So I put my name on it. And I hope to think that it will keep some of these big charities a little more responsible if they start putting the money in, in the wrong places. And that's really what, what that's about. I'm one of the largest dog rescues in America. I'm mostly known for pit bulls, which are one of my favorite breeds of all time. They are, of course, banned in many parts of the world, and they shouldn't be. The people should be, not the dog. It's always the people, not, not the dog. So, as my life went on, my agency at the time put me in a film called Airport 75. Did anybody see that movie? Born Innocent. Anybody see that movie? Sarah T, Portrait of a Teenage Alcoholic. Anybody see that movie? Let's see, uh, Sweet Hostage with Martin Sheen. The Exorcist 2, Terror in the Isles, uh, Victory at Entebbe, Stranger in the House, Roller Boogie. <laughs> Hell Night. Um, let's see. Um, what's the big one? Uh, Savage Streets. Uh, Wild Horse Hank. <laughs> and on and on and on. But I'm going to tell you a funny story. When, when I was young, and they would bring me magazines from Europe. So I'd see Swedish magazines, German, and, and there's my picture on the cover. You guys can find all this on the internet, right? Well, I'm known as the raciest, most controversial teenager. Now, I haven't done anything. It's the movies. It's my friends. They're rock and roll. I liked music, right? You guys like music. I like music. <laughs> I open up the magazine. Now, it's important to know, America is very prudish. Do you know what that means, prudish? It means we don't run around naked. <laughs> well, you all do, or did. I open up the magazine to see what's inside, and I'm like, oh, naked teenagers. Oh, they're so racy. So I thought you guys were out of control. You guys thought I was out of control. And I didn't know anybody from Europe to talk to, to say, what is this? Would somebody explain to me? So I just always thought you guys were crazy running around, you know, like naked. I think that's funny. <laughs> so <clears throat> many years later, I've made a lot of movies. You guys know that. Um, I found that all of the volunteering that I had done for children, I did a lot for kids. I'd raise, at this time of year, blankets, coats, jackets, things, food, um, go into hospitals, toys, go into hospitals and give them to kids. And I found that um, I didn't. I felt like things weren't getting done properly. And then 
my animal friends seem to be running into more and more trouble. And do you remember a couple years ago we had a big storm in, in America called Hurricane Katrina? So I was shocked and um, I felt that I couldn't stay home and do nothing. So I, I got the last plane ticket I could find. I got the last little truck um, and I slept in the back of a truck for two and a half weeks and it was awful and it should never happen and it's going to continue to happen. And I took, um, I ended up helping to get the remaining animals out of Louisiana. I'm very good at what I do. This is one thing that you, you are used to seeing me be with the makeup and charming and whatever. At home, this is not what I look like. I'm, I'm very rugged and I'm very serious. And in America, we're very much in trouble. But what I see, I know you guys need to know. I see the news and you, the, you have storms, you have flooding, you have snowstorms, more snow than we've ever had or that we all know about. I remember last year there was, there was some place um, in, in Europe, they have like 40 feet of snow. The ice caps are melting, things are changing. So this is what I have to say to you, pay attention, wake up. Tell your friends, find friends, volunteer, be neighborly, do something, find good people because one day you may just need to know these people. And I do the work for people, the kids, for your grandkids, because if we don't all pull together as a world, I'm sorry, we're in trouble. Everything has changed. Part of it is man-made, we've done it. Part of it is just the way that life is and is, it's history. I mean, it's, this is what evolution does. And great change will come. It's gonna be the internet, all the computer generated paraphernalia that we have nowadays. And then a lot of people are left out and they get no education. So you think about it, what the future is going to hold. And you need to think about it. And this is one of the greatest things that we can do is to join these shows, the, the sci-fi shows, the comic cons, the wizard worlds. Part of it is fantasy. That's fabulous. And part of it, you know, it's just entertainment to get your mind off of things to meet actors and people. Look at all these great people that are here. To have the opportunity to get an autograph, to shake their hand, that's fantastic. And, it, and, and we wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to come if it wasn't for Jasper inviting me. We had planned uh, back in February. I said, on my bucket list, you know what a bucket list is, yes? On my, what, a dream of mine would be to see Stockholm in, in December. Well, I'm here. And I'd kind of like to go see something. <laughs> I've seen the Fassa. I find that fantastic. My God, right in your backyard. That is like insane. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so... Has anybody seen the Vasa? All right, do you realize that the clothing, the little, um, the little sewing kit, the shoes are better made than the stuff we wear today? I was blown away. That ship was beautiful, beautiful. So the reason I'm not taking questions is because I still have jet lag. I have gone from Australia to America, over here, and I hope to think that I've answered some of your questions. Yes, the exorcist was really hard. No, I cannot turn my head around. <laughs> I, I absolutely recommend that you watch a, the Blu-ray. <clears throat> the Blu-ray has a documentary, and in the documentary you're going to see everything you want to know. How we turn the head around, the, me the mechanics how I levitated, 
Uh, you'll see me as a normal little kid drinking a milkshake. I'm a vegan now. I don't drink milkshakes anymore. But you'll see I'm normal. I was a working child actor. Very hard for people to understand. And I try to explain it. But I realize that nobody really understands and I don't know if they ever will. I think I was meant to do that film because I could withstand it. But it wasn't without a very heavy spiritual search. I worked my badungi off, as we'll say, to, to find a place of contentment, of understanding. Why do I think I did the film? Because I want to help change the world. And if I had done the Disney movies I wanted to do, nobody would have cared. Pamela Ferdin is one of the little girls in Disney and Lassie and Flipper and all these shows I wanted to be in. And guess what? Nobody pays attention to her saying animal welfare, children's issues, healthier food. She's over there doing the same thing and no one is turning their head. But I walk in the room, I am the most controversial person, yet I'm not really. But I will stand up for people's rights, animal rights, but I'm one person, guys. I cannot do this alone. You take a beating doing this work. And we're, we get tired. So it has to, we do it for you. We do it for everyone. So know that. Just get involved in your community. Get involved in your, tell your friends, your cousins, your relatives, no matter where they are in the world. Just get involved. Volunteer. The world can make a difference. I don't think the politicians are, are necessarily the way to go. I think it's the people. The people must speak. So many of us are happy to entertain you. I thought I would have been writing, producing, directing by now. And I had many great projects, I think. They were optioned by some of the biggest studios, but inevitably, oh, casually, they went in the wrong direction and somebody else made them with a different title. I feel I've been ripped off many times and I will write about this in my autobiography. It's what made me turn around and say, you know what? If Hollywood doesn't give me respect and care, I'm going to save this, this dog, this cat, this person. They do thank me for things I've done. Hollywood's very difficult. So I turned and said, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do this because they say thank you. I save lives. That's what I do. And I live by looking in their eyes and they say thank you for saving my life. Or it's a child that you make a difference in theirs. Or an older person. We need to give them respect. They gave us life. So for all of those things, that's who I am. And I'm really glad that I got to come here because y'all are on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for your love and support. The Exorcist is a theological thriller, meaning it's a religious film. It is about good and evil. The movie opens in Iraq. Max von Sydow, one of the finest actors ever known, on the silver screen, one of your own, finds a medallion and he knows. And where is it? It's in Iraq. Where are we fighting the war? In Iraq. What is it about? Religion. We are killing over whose God is the right God. I don't get it. I don't think I ever will. But I can tell you this. It is about good versus evil. Good must always prevail no matter how hard your journey is. No matter how high the mountain is. Remember, do the right thing. I search every single day of my life. I meditate, I look for answers, and I ask for strength. And when the, when the road gets very tough, I ask for more strength. Please give me the strength, help me. I'm not afraid to ask for help, but it's not from a person. I wish you all Godspeed through life. May you find peace, joy, love, compassion, 
some kind of understanding because you know what? Life is short and doggone it, it's a little wacky. Enjoy this incredible sci-fi convention. Thank you to Jesper for having me, for hosting all of you. Enjoy and I bid you happy holidays. Thank you so very, very much. Yeah, keep that applaud for Linda Blair. Thank you so much, Linda. Yes, something I must have. Oh shit, do you have to go with him? That was Linda Blair.